Hi guys, welcome to Little Wicket Railway. I'm Rob and today we're talking about automatic brake control. This is often referred to as ABC braking, and yes, I realize it's slightly irritating that the B stands for brake, but we still say braking at the end as well, but that's just how it is. I'd heard of ABC braking, but didn't really know what it was or how it worked until someone asked me to take a look at it. And having looked into it, I think this is something that more people need to know about because it's a very clever system and an easy way to implement basic automation on a digital layout. Let me give you a basic example of what it can do. So I've got my rail cart over here. I'm gonna turn the power up and we'll send it towards the terminus station. And now I'm not gonna to touch the controller again. And you might be thinking, well, it's just gonna crash. It's gonna hit the buffers and that'll be that. But wait and see what happens. You can see it's coming to a stop on its own. And there we go, completely stopped at the station, no input on the controller. And that is what an ABC braking module can do. So how does this work? What tells the train to stop and how do you implement it? Well, first you'll need a decoder that supports ABC braking. Not all decoders support this functionality. It tends to be the higher end decoders from the likes of Lens, Zimo, ESU and DCC Concepts that do. And some decoders only support partial functionality. Second, if your decoder does support ABC braking, then you need to enable it by changing the relevant CVs. My rail car is fitted with a lock sound version five, so I had to change CV 27. Third, we need to split our track into sections using insulated rail joiners. Here's our stretch of track connected to a DCC power supply with two feeder wires, one to each rail. To introduce an ABC stopping section in here, we need to break one rail in two places and isolate them using something like insulated rail joiners. The important thing is that this section needs to be long enough for your locomotive to come to a stop in. So this section might actually need to be quite long. Then when we connect the stopping section up to the DCC power supply again, we're going to pass the feeder wire to the isolated section of rail through the ABC braking module. So on this small test layout, I'm going to split the track into three sections. The first section is on the right over here. We've got this middle section and then the terminus section over here on the left. Finally, we need to introduce some simple electronics in between the controller and the track. So let's take a closer look at the circuit. This electronics is going to reduce the voltage of the DCC signal going to only one rail and create an asymmetrical DCC signal. We've got our DCC power coming in on the left and going out on the right. In between, we're going to introduce a series of fast recovery Zener diodes going in one direction. I'm using five diodes, but you might be able to get away with just three depending on the voltage drop created by the diodes you use and how sensitive your decoders are. The important thing is that the diodes can handle the current draw from your loco. A 3 amp rating should be more than enough. Then going in the other direction, we want another diode. This time we want a fast switching Schottky diode. Again, be sure to consider the current rating for this one. The final thing to add in is an override push button, which will bypass all the diodes and return the DCC signal to normal. So here's my little circuit. We've got the DCC signal coming in here. We've got my one, two, three, four, five diodes over there my diode in the other direction coming back, my push button for the override, and then the signal going out to the track. Just a word of warning that these small capacitors that Hornby include in some of their power connection rails and power clips cause me quite a few issues. So it's best to remove them if you're going to be using ABC braking. And you might also want to turn off DC operation using CV29 on your decoders. So as you've seen, with only a few diodes, we can put in some basic automatic stopping. Really useful for terminus stations or maybe where you've got a lift out section in your boards and you don't want models running off the end when the section is lifted out. But let's take this to the next level. What if we want our ABC braking module to check if there's a train in the next section along? If there is a train in the next section, then we want our rail car to come to a stop and wait for the section to become clear. But if there isn't, we just want it to continue. And here's a circuit that can do just that. Starting with our circuit from before, we've still got the five diodes going in one direction, one diode going in the opposite direction, but this time we're going to replace the push button switch with a relay switch. On one side of the relay, we've got a ground connection, a five volt connection, and the activation signal pin is connected to the output from a block occupancy detector module, which is detecting the occupancy on the next section along on the track. Then on the other side of the relay, we've got the DCC signal coming into the common connection. The normally closed terminal is connected to the diodes and the normally open is connected to a wire that bypasses the diodes. 
That might seem like I've got the relay connections mixed up, but the reason I've got it this way around is because the block occupancy detection module that I'm using is inverted. So when it detects a train, the output is grounded and deactivates the relay. And when there's no train, the output signal is five volts and the relay is activated. The block occupancy current sensor that I'm using is one you may have seen before in my videos from Merg, and it only costs a few pounds and you build it yourself. I thought it might be nice to take this one step further and add in a two aspect signal to show what's happening. So I've got a red LED connected to a thousand ohm resistor to the output signal of the occupancy sensor. Then I've got a green LED connected to the collector of a transistor. The signal pin from the occupancy module is connected to the gate of the transistor and the emitter from the transistor is connected to the signal pin on the relay. So let's see if that all works. I've connected the circuit to the middle section of the test lout. You can see that the green LED is on at the moment, to so say the next section is free. I'm going to run my Jimty into the next section just to prove that the block occupancy detection is working. And when we go into there, the red light should come on and you might be able to hear the relay switching. So it's just entering the section now. And yeah, we've got a red LED there and I heard the relay switch. Okay, now let's check that the ABC module connected to the occupancy detector is working. The Jinty is still blocking the terminus, so we've got a red signal. My rail car is over here, so let's turn up the power and see what happens. We might have a collision coming up. So it's moving away now. It's approaching the stopping section. So it's just entering the stopping section now and it's coming to a stop just as we would expect it to. So now let's take the Jinty off using the hand of God. We've got a green signal and it should start to move away and there we go it's pulling away just as it should do. So I think we can say that that is all working. So there we go, that's a really basic demonstration of how ABC braking can be integrated with an occupancy sensor, a relay and some LEDs to create some easy automation for only a few pounds. I've made my circuit quite large for demo purposes, but you could easily squeeze all of that onto a small printed circuit board. There's quite a bit more to ABC braking than I've got time to cover in the video. A lot of decoders have the option for you to adjust settings to make sure it works the way you want it to. Things like stopping speeds, restart timings, and the direction of travel that it applies to. Of course, you don't have to build your own ABC modules. They are available to buy ready-made from a few places. The lens versions are the most expensive with the basic module at around 13 pounds. And for their top end module that does block detection and signaling, similar to what I've just demonstrated, it's around 60 pounds. DCC Concepts do a nice looking board with easy to use jumper settings for just over 10 pounds each. And Lay's DCC do a very basic module for under five pounds. There are probably other options out there, so do have a Google and see what you can find. Let me know in the comments if you've used any of the modules that I've just suggested or if you've got any experience with ABC braking. If you found this video useful, then please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. I would very much appreciate it. Thanks to all my YouTube members and patrons for your support and for making all this possible. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I will hopefully see you again soon.